Let's get on with a standard structure of the Hacker set. We are going to use Hacker 05. Download it here. It should get the zip file and automatically extract it into the ins file. Um, again, we've got nice strong data, um, great R int, so no problems expected. Let's go and solve the structure, the structure solution, um, settings here, shell XT will do just fine and solve it. And we should have the structure on the screen in a second. Here we are. Okay, here we go. The zoom is maybe not quite right. So there is this thing called extra zoom. Extra zoom and you can make it like 0.8. If you press on this orange button here, it'll move it down. So maybe that was a little bit too far. So maybe we want 0 0.9 and then we don't have to keep zooming the structure. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to one. <laughs> I don't know what it was before. Okay. So this looks like it's all done. We have got a boron cage here. We've got the carbons identified and let's refine this and see what happens. Okay. So all the hydrogen atoms are quite clearly visible. Olix2, by the way, is set to show the number of peaks that it expects. So Olix2 looks at the structure and then thinks, well, how many hydrogen atoms are there required? And this is roughly, it's a good guess, but it's a, it's a guess. So it, it, it seems to think that 27 hydrogen atoms are required and this is what's showing. So the peaks that are showing here correspond to the number of hydrogen atoms. If you change that number here, and put another number of peaks in, and then Olix2 will just show that number of peaks. Yeah. So this is a bit of automation that is quite useful, I think, because you can you can see what's happening. Control M should also show quite clearly all these hydrogen atoms that are here. So let's just add them um, automatically. This box is ticked, so therefore it will also automatically refine. So now it shows five peaks. That's the default. So when it thinks it's found all the hydrogens then it will show five. Let's make it anisotropic. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it, anisotropic first, then hydrogen atoms, or often it's better to do it anisotropic first, but it, it doesn't really matter. So here we can already see this hydrogen needs to turn around. So Control M shows us well a couple of things. Firstly, it added a hydrogen here where there isn't one. And I suspect it added that first and then added this one in the wrong place because it looks at hydrogen bonding potentials. Um, right. So first of all, let's delete this. And there's a number of ways. The easiest, of course, is to delete this hydrogen atom and then H add again. It will put it in the right place. But I just show you another way. You could actually select this grouping, this oxygen and the hydrogen, and then use the fit. And you can right click on a bond like this and then you can move it over. So it's like a rotor. It's moving it around that bond. So again, deleting it and then fitting it again is by far the easiest way of doing it. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So there's not much movement. Let's do refine. Uh, let's use 12 cycles and uh, then it should hopefully settle. What else have we got here? The weighting scheme needs to be switched on. We haven't done this. Goodness of fit is 0 0.88 is not bad, but of course the weighting scheme we should always try to switch on and see. Um, so it always makes a bit of a difference, especially to WR2, of course. Now let's look at this. This looks all nice and straight. Now we've got 200 here. Yeah, let's try whether there is some extinction and it can't do any harm to try. Um, we have got, yeah, 13, 26. So this is 26 is twice 13. So it's probably not worth refining this and, and, and checks if we'll complain if, if you do. <laughs> right, Control M should hopefully be very, very clean. That's 1.11, 0 0.11, so it's very, very good. Now, this Hoft thing here is red, so this means the absolute stereochemistry that has been determined that is zero, but it's red because the ESD here is, is quite big, so it's 0 0.9 with an ESD of 8. I'd say it is it is unambiguously determined and maybe this shouldn't be read. Um, it is it is quite clear that this is the correct stereochemistry. So RSA 
are is able to tell you the the chiral atoms so C6 and CO9. If you want to know where they are, you can head over to tools and chemical tools, label chiral atoms. So if you put this on, then you see the chiral atoms are labeled. So it's this one here. Shift and the left mouse allows you to move these labels and this one here. Control M to get rid of the map. Um, right, so these are the chiral atoms and they're both S. Um, so I suspect we're done here. <laughs> uh, 0.16%. It's looking quite good. There is hardly any residuals. So I think we just the last check at bad reflections. There's nothing here. I think we are pretty much done with this structure. Thanks for using Olix too.